horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi yo silver, the Lone Ranger. The discovery of gold in the western United States attracted many criminals from the east. With no adequate law enforcing agency on the frontier, they found it easy to jump claims and to rob the honest miners and prospectors. It was then that the masked rider of the plains started his great fight for justice. It was he who brought peace and security to the new territory. And without him, the winning of the west would never have been possible. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! There's adventure on the trail ahead! Hi, Silver! Away! Our story begins thousands of miles away from the Western Range country. A tall, three-masted schooner is beating her way around the horn, San Francisco bound. Spray lashes her decks. Wind whistles through the rigging. Two men have been washed overboard, lost forever. A third, Luke Ross, has been dashed from a cross stay, lifted from the deck by young Johnny Thompson, and carried to his bunk in the forecastle. <clears throat> Thank you, Johnny. But I'm done for. Fair done for. Don't say that, Luke. Oh, it ain't no use. I can feel it coming on. I had a feeling all the time I'd never, never live to see Frisco. Oh, now you will. Oh, wait, Johnny. There's, there's something. Yes? You've been a friend to me. About the only one aboard ship. I've only give you a hand now and then when you uh -huh. needed it. Uh -huh. When all the rest of them, they laughed at me for a land lover. Oh. Listen, Johnny. There's something I've got to tell you before, before I'm through. A message to your folks? No. Take that. My folks are all gone. Johnny, it's a mine. A, a mine my brother Jake located the time he went west. Yes? That's why I signed up for the voyage, Johnny. To jump ship at Frisco, get to the other side of the mountains, and work that mine myself. Gold? So much gold there ain't no sale. Golly. Oh, Johnny, under my blankets, there at the foot of my bunk. L lift them up and look under them. Sure. Is this what you meant, Luke? Yeah, it's a map. It tells just how to reach that place. It's way up in the hills. Jake said you'd, you'd never find it without you had the map to show you the way. I'd never find it? The map is yours, Johnny. For all you've done for me. No, you don't have to do this, Luke. Johnny, don't argue. That paper, it'll tell you what... I can't. Where to go and all. There's a town. Just a small place. Jake said a friend of his lived there. A friend? A prospector. Silas Hanson's the name. He'll guide you if you find him. Jake... Jake always wanted Si to have a share of the mine. You, you remember? Won't you? 
You've got my word. Name the town is Osage. Osage. Silas Hansen. Yes, I've got it. Huh. It's good to know you're going to get what I... I can. I... Look out. What? Behind. Find me. I'll fix you. Hey, you... Hold me Talk. on. You wouldn't break a coat's this... arm, would you? Oh, Talk that me. Sure, Governor. I never meant no arm. Quickly, I didn't. Get out. Sure, Governor. Sure. I never meant no arm. Luke. Luke. Luke, can't you hear me? Luke. Dead. Far from San Francisco, many months later, a riderless horse brought the Lone Ranger into the chain of events which had started at sea. The place was a small, well-hidden camp many miles from the nearest town. The time was late afternoon. Scout! Scout, old fellow. Where's Tonto? What's happened to your master? Hey, Silver. Silver, old boy, something's happened to Tonto. We've got to find him. Steady, boy. Lead the way, Scout. We'll follow. Come on, Silver! The afternoon faded into night. In another camp many miles away, an Indian was bound securely to a tree and a burly outlaw, gun in hand, glared at him. The two figures were lighted by the dancing flames of a small campfire. All right, Indian, talk. What was you doing sneaking around my camp? Tonto, not talk. I've seen you before someplace. Maybe. Someplace, yeah. I got it. I seen you riding across country with a mask, fella. Sure, that's it. Now then, Injun, who was that mask, hombre? Tonto, not Tom. No? Well, you will before I'm through with you. You wasn't spying on me for nothing. You and your mask part are up to some game. You not find out. <laughs> there. The next will come closer. How's for talking now? Feel stubborn, eh? Why, bless you, red skin out. Huh? Oh, Jew, I... Hey, who's this hombre? He's the fellow I was telling you about, Baldy. The one that was asking questions about you at the cafe. Yeah? Get down from that horse. Oh, blooming saddle is. <laughs> ain't used to riding horseback, eh? Horses and saddles ain't for such as me, Governor. Blimey, they ain't. Forget it. You ain't crippled. Now, what's your business? What was you so blame anxious to find out about me for? Why, it's like this, Governor. I... Ah, uh, who's the ruddy savage? Never mind him. Right now, I'm a sight more interested in who you are. Me? Well, I'm is what they call me, Governor. Al Smithers is the name me old lady gave me. But I'll answer to Limey. Later, the Betsy Ann out of Liverpool, British Register. No, gone, Baldy. You ever hear a fellow talk like him before? Uh, what's wrong with the way You I ain't told me it. yet what you was asking questions for. Governor, how'd you like to make yourself a piece of change? Go on. I ain't no blooming mountain climber, see? So what I need is a couple of coals like you to sort of show me the ropes. And, Governor, you can take the word of Al Smithers, it'll be worthwhile. What's the proposition? Well, I'll tell you, matey. Seems as if a fella named Jake Ross found a gold mine. Jake Ross? Baldy, you heard about him, recollect? He was a fella kept bringing all that gold into town from somewhere in the hills. And nobody could ever find out where it come from. Yeah. Heard of him, eh? Then maybe he'll join up with me, eh? Just say the word. Say he'll go off and off, and I'll tell you what I knows. You savvy with that mindset? I don't, Governor. But I can show you the buckle as does. Well, is it a go? You're signing on? Limey, well, if you can fix it for us to find where Jake Ross was getting his dust from, you just bet we'll go 50-50. Shake, matey. Sure. Now, who's this fella knows about the mine, and where's he at? His name's Johnny Thompson. He was on the Betty Ann along with me. A bloomin' yank that made Shanghai will be put in at Baltimore. And right now, Governor, he's lying of course for the place is called outside. How would he know anything about a Jake's mine? He knows, don't you fear. He knows because he's got a map to the place. And mighty, that map was given by a cove named Luke Ross. Jake's brother as ever was. Well, you I'll be... hear that, Baldy? A map brought up by Jake himself, I'll bet you. That means the gold's as good as ours. Where's this fella at now? This Thompson hombre. Told you he was heading for Osage, didn't I? How far out? 
The way he was silent, Governor, he ought to be making a landfall before tomorrow night. What's he going to Osage for? Why, to look for... Oh, blimey. Hey, what's A the... mask feller. Don't clap, brother. What the... I've heard some interesting things, Baldy. How'd you know my name? Not only I've been trailing you for quite a while. Are you... Reach for those guns, Ike, and I'll outdraw you. Yeah, well, I'll show you them. Oh, Lord, let me. Now drop those guns back in their holsters. You'll never complete that draw. Uh, sure, stranger, sure. Just don't shoot. Hold still, Sadler. Uh -huh. I'll cut these ropes. There. Can you make it? Uh, me, me get loose now. Look here, stranger. The engine came sneaking around here and I... Quiet. Quiet, I tell I'm you. I'm going to give you a warning. Todd will bring up the horses. I left them in that grove back there. Uh, Todd will get them. Baldy, I haven't been able to get anything on you yet. I heard your talk just now, but I can't turn you over to the law for something you haven't done yet. Well, Erston, what have you got to give me? You're a crook, same as me, or you wouldn't be wearing that mask. There ain't no reason for us to have trouble. Fact is, if you'd like to throw in with me and I can lie me here, why... I'm not throwing in with you, and I'm warning you not to go through with your plans. Don't try to get that mine. Eh, yeah, now, ain't you going it a bit iron mighty? You ain't no bloomin' talk. I've said enough. You understand me. Here, boy. Good. Baldy. Well? I'm going to find Thompson and let him know you're on his trail. If you're so doggone anxious to get something on me, why are you giving me this warning? Because I know your kind. Huh? You'll risk anything for gold, especially if you can get it dishonestly. Well, you've had your warning, and I don't expect you to heed it. I'll tell you this, however. When you make a slip, Tonto and I'll be there. You yep. ready, Tonto? Uh, be ready. Come on, get over. Go. Uh, the meddling skunks. Now, who asked him to come butting in? Baldy, what are we going to do? Do? Well, one thing we ain't going to do is let that hombre scare us out of a fortune. But with him here and what we said... We'll find some way to take care of that. Limey, I don't reckon you will like it, but you're going to have to do some more riding. We're breaking camp, clearing out and covering our trail. The Lone Ranger and Tonto returned to their camp and in the morning set out on the trail to Osage. It was not difficult to recognize Johnny Thompson when they overtook him. He was still wearing the ill-fitting shore clothes he had bought in San Francisco, and he was obviously unaccustomed to the saddle. That must be him, Tonto. Uh, we'll soon find out, at least. Come on, get him up, look out. Hello there. Him hear you, but he's not stopping. Rain up, rain up your horse. Get up, get up. I'll stop him, Tonto. Come on, old fellow, come on. Stay back. This isn't a hold up. I've got no money. And I just told you this isn't a holdup. Then what are you stopping you me? You know a man called Limey. What? Where'd you find out about him? Where is he? How'd you come to know him? He's somewhere behind you on the trail. And I happen to know he's following you for a map you have in your possession. I knew it. I knew he'd follow. You've got more than him to fear. Limey alone wouldn't last long in this country. But he's joined up with two crooks. He's told him about the map? He has. But what's this to you? The two men with him are Baldy Baker and a fellow called Ike. No one's ever heard his last name. I've suspected them to be outlaws for a long time. Now I'm sure of it. I warned you so you wouldn't be their next victim. That mask you're wearing... Doesn't prove I'm an outlaw. I have my own reason for wearing it. I'll just bet you have. You have that map with you? Where it is and what I've done with it is none of your business. Thompson, I'm trying to help you, or I wouldn't have given you this information. You're an outlaw. You wouldn't be wearing that mask. You won't be convinced. Very well. Just how do you expect to get there? You're going to attempt the trail alone? I'll tell you how I'm going. Silas Hansen is taking me if I can find him. Silas Hansen is an honest man. Which is more than I can say for some others. Let him take you there, but don't trust anyone else. Never fear. Osage is still quite a few miles ahead. Get going. You, you aren't even going to search me? I said get going. Well, I'll be switched. You are a funny pair of crooks. Get up. Get up there. Now what we do? Find outlaw? They probably covered the tracks pretty well after the warning I gave them. Uh, that doesn't matter, however. If it had, I would have said nothing. You got planned? There's one thing certain. If Baldy and I can lie me do try anything, they'll have to show themselves to Johnny and Silas Hanson. That's right. And if we follow Johnny when he leaves Old Sage, we'll be on hand whenever those crooks act. Uh. Whether Johnny believes us outlaws or not, Tonto, he's going to be protected. And that's good. And we're going to give him that protection. Come on, Tonto. Get him up. Oh, Silver, how are you? The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Johnny Thompson rode on to Osage, made inquiries in town, and learned that old Silas Hansen still lived there. He lost no time introducing himself and telling the purpose of his visit. Silas and his daughter Linda made the young man welcome. And when Johnny had finished his story, Silas said, Now this here masked fellow you met up with, just what did he look like? You recollect? Oh, he was tall. Taller than me, even. Broad-shouldered. Held himself right straight in the saddle. Mm. What kind of a horse was he riding? Gosh, Mr. Hanson, I'd never forget that horse if I lived to be a hundred. A white horse? White. Say, how'd you guess it? Is that masked man a well-known outlaw around here? Oh, that must be... Hold on, honey. Wait till we make sure. You said there was a redskin with him? Did you hear the redskin's name by any chance? No. Can't say as I did. Oh, wait. I did hear the masked man call out something or other just before he grabbed my reins. Yeah? It, it was pronto or... Or Monto or something like that. <laughs> I just don't... Tonto? <laughs> sure, Tonto, that's it. Oh, the... Pa, it was. And, Johnny, you went and mistook that fellow for an outlaw. Golly, that's the best yet. Huh? <laughs> I did something wrong? <laughs> pa, you must make fun of him. He's a stranger in the way. He couldn't have heard of the Lone Ranger before. Lone Ranger? Shuck, son, that fellow ain't not only not a crook, but he's the one hombre in these parts that crooks steer clear of. They got any notion who he is. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, you see, Johnny. Oh, uh, here now, honey. <laughs> uh, you, you can't be calling this young fellow by his first name already. He most likely won't care for it. Oh, but... Uh, well, I don't mind. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, nobody knows who the Lone Ranger is, where he came from, his name, nothing. But he's done more to build up the West than any other man alive. He's quite a feller, all right. But ain't you taking in a hull heap of territory, honey? Well, he has, Paul. You know he has. I... I think he's wonderful. I'll bet he'd be mighty proud to hear you say that, Miss Linda. Oh, he, he wouldn't even know I was alive. Doggone, how many men do you want on your string, anyhow? First you're making eyes at Johnny here. Then you go to talking about the mask fella like a lovesick girl. I wasn't either making eyes at Johnny. <laughs> uh, you go with me into the mountains then, Mr. Hanson? Sure will. We leave first in the morning. Get up before dawn, reach the hills before night comes. That's great. You... You seem mighty anxious to get away. <laughs> but don't you see, Linda? Uh, Miss Linda, if we find that gold, then I can get back real quick and... And? and? Oh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you young folks got me beat. <laughs> Silas and Johnny left several hours before dawn the following day. It was two hours later when three shadowy figures approached the Hanson place. Linda, having seen her father and Johnny off, had remained up and was busy in her kitchen. Well, Miss Valley, they tell me you're leaving. Such a wish, your bright eyes and sweet smile. For oh, they tell me. Yes? I've got a message for you, Miss. Uh, one moment. You have a message? Yeah, we oh. come blimey. Ain't she a looker, though? Oh. Now, what's wrong, miss? Give you a fright, did I? You, you're the man, Limey. Oh, to be, eh, Duchess? Cricky, if I ain't a man for the ladies to hear about. Well, that. You'll be late in half an hour. Get out of here. Get out. Miss, that's just what we aim to do. But you can get into your riding clothes first, because you're going with it. Unaware that Limey and his newfound friends had seized Linda, Silas and Johnny continued their journey. The mountain air was keen, the sun warm, their horses fresh and willing. Johnny, to whom the West was a new experience, was enthusiastic, and Silas laughed at the young man's <laughs> high spirits. <laughs> well, Johnny, kind of cotton to this here country, don't you? Mr. Hanson. Uh, Silas to you, Johnny. I keep forgetting. Silas, this country is grand. Uh-huh. Sort of think so myself. Golly, I wouldn't want to go back east again, even if I hadn't met... Huh? Met who? Uh, no one, Silas. Oh. It's like I said, I keep forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> Their way led into more rugged country. They reached Timberline and continued beyond, where even the sure-footed pack horses found the trail difficult. Silas and Johnny were not the first to climb the mountain that morning, however. High above them rode a masked man and an Indian. Come on, Silver! We must be making for that pass up ahead, Tano. That only way, trail, go. We'll go through it first. Wait until we're sure they're coming, then ride on again. Uh. Come on, old fellow. Come on, Silver. Three men and a girl followed Silas at a safe distance. 
The girl's face was worn and anxious. Of the men, one was heavy set with a head that shone bald when he removed his Stetson. One keeping the saddle with obvious difficulty was thin, furtive, and wizened. The third was somber, hawk-faced, sullen. He raised his hand and pointed to the trail before them with... This is just about where Jake Ross used to lose one fellas that followed him, Baldy. How do you know them fellas in front of us ain't going to do the same? <laughs> Jake weren't the same proposition as these fellas. He couldn't be followed because he was the best fella on the trail in his parts. Silas ain't so bad, but he's getting old. The other fella's just a tenderfoot. I hope they lose you. I hope with all my heart they do. <laughs> Dodgers, you're a game sport. Blimey if you ain't. But your friend's playing a losing game. Oh, a blasted horse. That blooming Hannibal likes to make me ache. Yes, he does. Blimey if he don't. Still deeper into the mountains rode Silas and Johnny, following the clear markings of the map. At first, they were constantly on the watch for Baldy and Ike. But as they approached their destination, they forgot everything but the gold mine. One day, shortly before noon, Johnny shouted, Silas, there it is. Just like the map says, see? A big rock carved out to look like a pillar. That spring trickling out from the top. The cave just beyond. Come on, Silas, hurry. Get up, get up. Tired as they were, two men were far too eager to explore their find to take the time to rest. All that day, their picks dug at the gleaming sides of the cave. That night they slept, but at dawn they returned to their task. Hour after hour, they swung their picks until finally Silas called a halt. Whew. That's enough for now. Johnny, drop that pick of yours before you wear yourself up. The gold will keep. Silas, ain't it wonderful? Gold. Did you ever see anything like it? Mm -mm. Golly, I never had a thrill like this in my whole life. I'll bet you never. And it's a fact, it's the richest claim I ever seen. No wonder Jake kept it secret. This is the kind of a claim that men will murder for. You're right, Silas. What, Lyman? <laughs> Don't be getting good to see an old shipmate. Hey, ain't you glad to see me, matey? You followed us. What'd you expect? <laughs> we ain't got nothing again owning a gold mine ourselves, have we, Lyman? <laughs> <laughs> Cookie, we ain't. Up with your hands. I reckon. You're now. covered. And if you shoot his governor, what'll be happening to the Duchess? What's that? What Lyman's trying to say is maybe if you shot us, it wouldn't go so good for your girl, Linda. Linda? <laughs> Thought that would fetch you. Sure, we followed you. We brought Linda along. Right now, she's in a place you won't ever find. With Ike to guard her. You skunk, I'd like to... Is it now? Silas, I reckon we hold the whip hand. Always supposing you'd like to see your girl again. Now, how's it for a trade? Uh, a trade? Sure. The mine... For the girl. Do it, Silas. Go on, do it. We can't let nothing happen to Linda. I don't give a hoot for my share of the gold alongside her. Not so fast. Huh? This mine ain't never been claimed. We let you go and you'll break your necks getting the town to file on it. No, sirree. You ain't getting away with nothing like that. But we're not going no. to do What you're going to do before we give you back the girl or let her go, you sign the paper. And when you got here, you found we'd stake the claim ahead of you. That way, if you try any funny business, we'll have the evidence to show you're just claim jumpers. Slick, ain't you? I know my way around. We, we've got to do it, Silas. We've got no choice. Yeah. Find nothing. Oh, that's oh, that's man. What? Silas, your dawn is free. We trailed these crooks and took her away from Mike. You don't have to sign anything. Come on, Silver. The man's fella. He's got the girl. Oh, I'd like to cut his blasted throat. Yes, I would. Come on, we're going to find out what happened to Ike. Oh, they got the girl loose. Hurry up, Lyman. That, hurry up. that must have been a lone ranger. But where'd he go? What did he do with Linda? Why did he bring her here? You come, as Tonto. The Redskin. You come. Baldy and his companion raced to the spot where they had left Ike and Linda. When they arrived, they could scarcely believe their eyes. Oh, hold on, hold on. She's still here. What's the matter, Baldy? Have you seen a mask call around this camp at any time? Gosh, no. Have you? I've seen no one. Then what in blazes was he up to? He's got me beat for fair, mighty. What's this all about? Why, 
Well, we had old Silas and the young fellow just where we wanted them. All ready to sign the paper and glad of the chance. When that mask fella showed up and yelled that he'd found the girl and got her loose. The fella's loco. And what's his game, eh? What's the blazer up to? This should show you. Come on, Silver. Up with your hands, all of you. Who won't get Don't away with this? Don't you make a mistake, Baldy. Reach. What blazes you? You wanted to know why I said Linda wasn't your prisoner. It was to make you lead me here, and you did. Let's rush him, Baldy. We're three to his one. You're not three to my one now. The bastard ruddy savage is coming. Oh, oh, Paul. Oh, 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 oh. Linda, oh. You, you're all right, honey. They haven't harmed you. I'm so glad you came, Johnny. Doggone, Johnny. Just quit looking at her and untie them ropes. We'll clear out. Just let us go and we won't bother you no more. Well, we'll on the Governor. Cross me blooming out and hope you die. I ain't the chap as will bother you no more. That's quite true. You won't. Wait, listen. Can't we make a deal? Stranger, can we? You remember what I told you the first time we met? I, I guess I thought I... I knew you'd try for the gold in spite of my warning. And I said that when you did, when you made a slip, Tonto and I would act. Please. Please. That's enough. Silas. Yeah? Tonto will stay with you and Johnny to guard these men. The three of you should have no trouble. Shucks, not now that you've given us the upper hand on them. And I'll head for town and bring the law. But here, you don't have to trouble yourself no more for us. You jack... Are you still Wait! Away? Hey, look at him go, will you? Talks like a blooming toff and rides like his ruddy majesty dragoons. Now, why didn't you cows tell me the blighter wasn't human? Blimey, mates, he ain't! There's a Texas Ranger threatened with blackmail. We must help him. Hello, Silver, away! The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.